Well, if the first 10 seconds of this program is any indication, you're in for 59 minutes of television fun. <laughs> it's Wake Up on Hatchy Valley on this Tuesday, the 14th day of November 2017. Dan Koontz, still getting back into the saddle after my week off last week, but I'm feeling, uh, feeling pretty good. Happy Tuesday to Steve Harrow, News Director. Wow, you shaved too. Oh yeah, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that. I did not shave for the ten days I was not here. No, because you know you sandwich two weekends and then around uh, uh, the day off. I actually shaved on Sunday for the first time in eleven days. I was looking pretty Dan Haggerty. I was going to say a Dan Haggerty. Yeah, boy, that goes back. So no, I looked. Uh, I was a bit on the hairy side, but I'm on television, so facial hairs are no no. At least uh, from my department, anyway. Happy Tuesday, fourteenth day of November. I'm Dan Coons. He is Steve Hare. Uh, our news director still getting caught up on emails and everything that you have to do when you take a week off and this uh, alarmed me a week ago yesterday in fact you mentioned this as a matter of fact after the election results uh, Wednesday uh, I did not know this I've been kind of out of touch the turnout for the uh, prime uh, for the general election a week ago today dismal uh, uh, abysmal this is terrible this is terrible Chelan County 37.86 percent Douglas County 23 percent well, that's, up, that's up from election day, of course. Yeah, but that's awful. Oh, What's yeah. going on? Was there a game? Where I, was I too tired? It's not that hard to vote, people. No, and that's like 25% of the 70% who actually register. I mean, come on. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, I, I don't want to, I'm not going tisk tisk to all of you people out there. Uh, I'm not going to ride in my soapbox. Just the numbers are the numbers. 37.6% turnout for Chelan County. 23.24% turnout for Douglas County is not good. Of course, congratulations to the candidates who won, sure. but is it representative of, you know, the total electorate? So that's your question. And and the, the other thing that bugs me, and you, you brought this up as well, there were contested races. Decisions mm -hmm. had to be made. Mm -hmm. When Wenatchee School Board, when Wenatchee City Council, East Wenatchee City Council. Um, I think you'd have to go into the precincts, especially in the Wenatchee School District, to find out total vote turnout in mm -hmm. that particular district. That may have been more, may have yeah. been higher, but it wasn't enough to uh, override the dismal showing countywide. Yeah. And those numbers will be available to us once they certify yeah. the election on November 28th. That's when it's all done, rubber stamped, it's a done deal, we're over with it. Uh, but uh, those, those numbers, are not good. Yeah, they stink. Yeah, yeah really, they do. Yeah. It, it, just, it bugs me. It's not that hard to vote. No, no. especially isn't. with vote by mail now, there's just no excuse no. for there's, not participating in the process. You know? Yeah, anyway. But that's, uh, that's kind of a bee under our bonnet all the time, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. I, you know, I, I think Skip and Thad do a great job getting the word out. Per, do people not know there was an election going on? <laughs> so, I mean, that's, I, just, I just don't get it. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, let's continue on down the road here on this Tuesday. My guest in the second half of the show, my good friend Jerry Anderson for the 1HE Central Lions Club will be dropping by. Uh, they are uh, bringing back a great tradition. Uh, they're having a big tailgate party, luncheon, cougars. Huskies getting together, having a little wing ding. It's coming up on the 17th, which is just a few days away. Uh, it's going to be really cool. Uh, the head football coach of Bonacci High School, Scott Devereaux, will be the keynote speaker. He's going to be talking about three outstanding Panther athletes who are all playing Division I football at a high level. Uh, Trey Adams at the University of Washington, Cody O'Connell from Washington State University, and Isaiah Brant Sims down at Stanford. Uh, and they're having a little wing dang, and Jerry will be talking about that and some other cool stuff with Jerry. Well, we have a lot hanging on this year's Apple Cup, too, don't we? Just like last year's. Yeah. It's a big one. <clears throat> it's a big Apple Cup. And it's back on Saturday, too. These Friday Apple Cups on Thanksgiving week, they don't do it for no, me. No, no, no. They don't do it for me at all. So at least it's a Saturday, which helps. Uh, also, we have your weather forecast, which is looking kind of interesting. Your past report is coming up. Kind of light in the world of sports, but we will be profiling the unbelievable autumn campaign so far for the Cascade High School Kodiak girls programs, both soccer and volleyball. Is it in the water? We'll talk about that. It'll be an interesting conversation. It's coming up in sports. We have birthdays today in history, the obscure holiday, and everyone is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. Ooh, I see a beautiful sunrise. You want to see some up. incredible shots? Oh, yeah, this Wait till we get to the Lake Wenatchee shot. You're yeah. going to go, wow, take <laughs> these guys off the air and just show me that for the next 57 minutes. Around the Valley we go, courtesy of Local Tell Sky Fi Network. Look that is that. the cross camera. That's pulled back about far, as far back as it goes, Steve. Of course, as we mentioned before, these cameras can move. We can rotate them. We can go up and down and back and forth and diagonal. So that is the, the, the Wenatchee Heights camera. We call it the cross camera because it's next to the cross. And that's pulled as about as far back as you can get. 
Looks like sunshiny day today. Yeah, it's, it's going to start out sunshine and the clouds are going to be coming in by noon today. It's the exact opposite of yesterday. Remember yesterday morning it was cloudy and foggy. Mm -hmm. And then by 11 the sun came out and it was a fairly pleasant afternoon. We just completely re reversed that process. It's going to be sunny this morning and the clouds will be thickening up. And by noon or 1 the sun will be gone. Boy, comparing to what they're seeing over in the Seattle and Puget Sound area with the, with the stiff winds, we're relatively calm here. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, thank you very much, Cascades. That, of course, is Omi Garden. Again, that's pulled back quite a bit. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous sunrise. Isn't that beautiful? I just love these views. And I hope we do have the Lake Wenatchee camera. That's camera two. Let's go to camera three. And that's Lower Butte. That's up in Chelan. Boy, that's beautiful. You can see the three fingers uh, right there. I can see the one of the three. Sunset Marina. No, there they are. They're all three. That's right. Yep, they're all right there. So, good morning, Chelan. Thanks for joining us. We have a big audience up in Chelan. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, I made that up. I good morning, Chelan. And finally, I think we will be taking you up to Lake Wenatchee. Ooh, Ooh that. Ooh, the fog is rolled in. The lake cougar. is there. Look at that. Is it, you see a cougar? Is that what you said? Is that Cougar Mountain? No, no, no. That's no. Uh, Two Rivers. Two Rivers. Oh, Two Rivers. Okay. That's the very head of Lake Wenatchee. I thought you said you saw a cougar, and I thought, no, man, no. you have great eyes. That's Boy, impressive. Boy, that looks a little creepy. It does, doesn't mm -hmm. it? About 10 minutes ago, it was really cool. But that is, it's, I love the Lake Wenatchee area. It's just beautiful. It's a 45-minute it's a drive, and you're just in another, another world altogether. We're planning to test out the new camper up there. Oh, are you? Yeah. Come springtime? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you at all. Bring Get my yours. reservations in early, though, for the state park up there. Already? Oh, yeah. Boy, you are itching to go, oh, aren't you? you bet. <laughs> That's uh, seven minutes after the hour this Tuesday. How about your weather forecast from the National Weather Service? And it looks like that. There you go. We're looking at increasing clouds today. So you see the sun and the cloud together. It's going to be sunny this morning, cloudy this afternoon, high of 48. Yesterday's high, Steve, was 52. The low was 40 on uh, Monday. That was above normal. That was a, it was a mild day yesterday for this time of the year. Uh, next chance of measurable rain, Wednesday especially Wednesday morning. We're going to get some rain. Not a lot of rain, but it's going to happen. Uh, and basically, what's going on is a, is a parade of storms, one after the other. In fact, we have this graphically available to you from our friends, and there it is. There's a weather pattern. Storm number one is the one that came in yesterday and last night, the one you were talking about that got all the high winds uh, in the Puget Sound area. That's already moved off. Uh, you can see that red L there mm -hmm. in the Gulf of Alaska. That's going to be paying us a visit Wednesday and Thursday, thus the rain with some mm -hmm. snow in the mountain passes, and then way up there in far Russia is storm number three, and that's going to be coming and visiting us late next weekend. So here's your parade of storms. He's waiting off stage. Yeah, waiting off stage for, for, the, for the big announcement. So there you go. Uh, three big red L's. That lower one is already gone. That second one is set up to pay us a visit, and the third one will be coming down the pike in a little bit. So typical November weather. What are we talking about snow elevation? Uh, we'll get to that in just a little, little bit, as a matter of fact. So one more look at your weather forecast. Again, the sun will be taking this afternoon off. We'll be taking Wednesday off. We'll be taking Thursday off. We'll be back on Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, right back to the overcast conditions. Hit and miss rain showers. No snow at all on the valley floor. That's the valley floor. The mountain passes are another story all together. Let's go ahead and take a look at your cat pass cameras. This is up to the minute from the Department of Transportation. No advisories, no restrictions. On I-90, you can't really tell, but it's snowing lightly on Snoqualmie Pass. You'll find some snow and slush on the roadway, but it's not looking too bad. There is an advisory on Stevens. There usually is, and you'll see why when we go to Stevens Pass here in just a couple of minutes. There's Stevens. So you can see you've got some snow on the roadway there. Compact snow and ice. It is snowing on Stevens Pass, an advisory there. No advisories, no restrictions on Blewett. they got some snow and slush in places. Outside of that, no issues. Your forecast for the mountain passes. Snow today. Just a couple of inches, Steve. One to two inches. That's it. Uh, tonight, two to four inches. Wednesday, three to five inches. Wednesday night, one to three inches. Two to four inches Thursday. A couple of inches on Thursday night. A couple of inches on Friday. Then they catch a break for the weekend. So we get about a foot of snow. About a foot when it's all added up all together. There is a winter weather advisory for the mountain passes uh, for today, spilling into tonight, and then it's due to expire overnight tonight. But in the meantime, you're going to find hit and miss snow Basically, off and on, the most significant snow uh, that they think of is that storm that we talked about earlier that's Wednesday. coming in on Wednesday. Uh, three to five inches of snow on Wednesday is going to be the biggest uh, snow day today. So, there you go. That is your uh, forecast, and that is your past report from the National Weather Service and the Washington State Department of Transportation. Ten minutes after the hour on this Tuesday, the 14th day of November. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. We are live here 
from Studio 9 in downtown Wenatchee. Quick one minute break. When we come back, Steve Hare has your Tuesday morning news. Wake up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by Local Telecommunications. November 16 to 19, the Numerica Pack Upper Lobby and Wenatchee Convention Center Ballroom will come alive with trees, wreaths, and local entertainment. Bring your family, friends, and those holiday guests to see a colorful forest of trees and wreaths of all sizes. Take home one of your own by bidding in the silent auction and entering in the raffle. For more information, visit ncwlife.com. When it comes to tough, versatile workhorses, nothing compares to Kubota's full line of RTV series utility vehicles. Engineered to last and designed to deliver, Kubota's RTV X series doesn't just lead the way on rugged dependability, it leads the pack. From big jobs to small projects and daily chores, choose from America's top selling family of diesel utility vehicles to help you do it all. The Kubota dealer in North Central Washington is Valley Tractor and Equipment in the Baker Flats Industrial Park, East Wenatchee. And now it's time for your local news update with Steve Hare. Good morning and welcome to our Tuesday news. Here's what's happening in North Central Washington. A homeless man has died from burns he suffered in a November 7th fire in an alley off South Wenatchee Avenue. Now, Wenatchee police say 56-year-old Michael Alejandro Ruiz was pronounced dead Friday at Harborview Hospital in Seattle where he was being treated for burns to his hands and face. Mm. Police say Ruiz had been camping in the alley in a crude shelter he made of old couches and mattresses behind the Crown Furniture Store when it caught fire. Ruiz fled the scene before firefighters arrived, but he was found later in the evening about three blocks away by a service station employee. Ruiz dead of those burns at Harborview Hospital. Police had their hands full Friday night here in Wenatchee along the south side of town. What started out as a road rage incident evolved into a hit and run crash involving an East Wenatchee police patrol car. Now, Captain Edgar Reinfeld says it started shortly after 5 p.m. Friday when two drivers got into an argument while merging westbound over the Senator George Seller Bridge. Two drivers uh, exited the George Seller Bridge on the South Wenatchee Avenue, both pulled over. One driver got out with a golf club to confront the other driver. Uh, the other driver came up with a handgun. There was a bit of a standoff. Police were called, and when we arrived, we dealt with that situation, and we're working on that. While this was going on, East Wenatchee police uh, came to assist and ended up blocking that off-ramp from George Seller down onto South Wenatchee Avenue. A uh, driver went to take the exit and hit the vehicle, the patrol car belonging to East Wenatchee, and fled the scene, and there ended up being quite a bit of nonsense with that. They fled down to the Apple Yard area in South Wenatchee, or kind of the far end of South Wenatchee, right where it turns to the Malagalco Highway, where Shalane County deputies caught up with that vehicle and got it stopped and were able to arrest the driver for the hit and run. And again, uh, Captain Reinfeld said charges are also pending in the road rage investigation. He said the handgun that had been displayed by one of those motorists has been confiscated. Also, Moses Lake police responded to an interesting incident over the weekend. Get this, around 10.30 p.m. Saturday night, officers responded to a call that a resident heard his front door open and close and then found a 26-year-old suspect, here he is, Seth Estrada, inside the home. The homeowner confronted the suspect and then called 911. Officers say Estrada was very intoxicated and was unsure of where he was when they found him sitting at the kitchen table, apparently passed out in a chair. Here is the uh, image provided from the police body cam uh, there in the house. He was not cooperating and stood up to square off with the officer, grabbing a baby bottle off the table in front of him. Estrada made attempts to evade police by running to one of the bedrooms, but officers restrained the suspect. He was booked into the Grant County Jail on burglary charges. Douglas County Undersheriff Kevin Morris will be running as a candidate for the Sheriff's Office next year. He filed candidacy papers with the Washington State Public Disclosure Commission, which really sets the stage for him now to start raising funds for his campaign. Morris currently serves directly under Sheriff Harvey Jezdahl, who has not yet formally announced his intentions to file for re-election.
Also, North Central Washington Democrats are getting a head start on the 2018 election season. They're especially fired up about retaking the 8th District Congressional seat, being retired by Republican House Representative Dave Reichert. Last night, they hosted a forum in Kashmir at the Riverside Center for six candidates who will be competing in next year's primary. Now, the candidates addressed a range of issues, including health care, climate change, education, gun rights, immigration, agriculture, and the shrinking of the middle class. Every five members of Congress, less than one is a woman. That's not okay with me. Well, here's what I'm about, and here's what I care about. I believe in climate change. I believe climate change is real. I believe that women have the right to choose what they do with their own bodies. I believe that health care is the right for all and not the right for just a few. I look forward to meeting with you later tonight and in the, in the coming weeks. And thank you for being here. And thank you so much for all your energy and effort. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Thank you so much. To make sure that we're not pitting a good economy against a clean environment. To make sure that lobbying gets its clutches out from around Washington, D.C. And to try to get done something done for the 8th District where it can really take its position as a real essential bridge in this state between the east and west side. Thanks for your time. Thank you. So what I want to do is be pulled out to the middle class and stand up for working families every single day. Thank you. Because I refuse to live in a country where children, men, women, whatever background, whatever gender, whatever identity, don't have a shot at the American dream. Because that would have been me. So I'm running for Congress to make sure that that future never happens. Thank you. So I am stepping up for the families in this district. Look, we are all going to have to answer to this next generation. Elect me, and I will fight for our families. Thank you. We need to be leaders in whatever field we choose to be in. We don't have to be high tech. Everything is not high tech. Several other industries out there. And I would appreciate it if you vote for me. I will fight as hard as possible to make your family wages and incomes go up in for every middle class person in this district. Thank you. Last night's forum was co-hosted by the groups NCW United and Wenatchee Indivisible. And just a programming note, you'll want to stay tuned to the NCW Life magazine program for an in-depth look at all six candidates and for the full program and a special presentation to be uh, on NCW Live channel in the coming weeks. Also on Sunday, the Valley View Seventh-day Adventist Church here in East Wenatchee held their annual or second annual God's Closet giveaway event. More than 260 families attended the event, choosing from thousands of items of clothing and shoes. 300 boxes of winter clothing went home with families. In addition to clothing, a large selection of cribs, strollers, high chairs, and toys. They all found a new home. God's Closet says it's always looking for donations and uh, can be contacted through the Facebook page at God's Closet East Wenatchee. Their next giveaway event will be on Sunday, February 11th. And finally, Wenatchee High School's Golden Apple Marching Band came home this weekend with a lot of hardware after winning several top awards at the annual band competition in Auburn. The team was awarded first place in several categories, including Best Parade Band in the AAA Division. Also, they got awards uh, marching off of the first place honors in music, effects, percussion, color guard, and drum major. And of course, uh, Dan, as you're well aware, we all know how good the marching band is, but I'll tell you what, that is quite a feather in their cap. And they've been doing this for quite some time. Yeah. The Wenatchee High School Golden Apple Marching Band. Jim Kovac has been the director for a number of years. He had to replace a legend in Gene Sarge Huber, who is extremely well known. and Iconic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, he's done a whale of a job. It's a great band. They have a very active booster club, which certainly helps. Well, I'll tell you what, when you consider the accomplishments of not just the Golden Apple Marching Band, but Mariachi Wenatchee, mm -hmm. I mean, these are some real, real top-notch musical organizations. Yeah, the music department at Wenatchee High School seems to be doing just fine, doesn't it? Oh, they're it? doing just Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look at that sunrise back there. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, yeah. That's the best I've seen you look in a long time, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's 19 minutes lot. after the hour. You see that little thing at the bottom of your screen? That's yeah. what we call a lower third. And what you want to do is get a hold of us. Have you got a news tip for us? Get a hold of us.
We'd love to hear from you. We try to make it as easy as possible. We want to remind you that this is as much your station as it is ours. So, Steve, any number of ways for folks to get a hold of us. That's right. You can contact us by email at news at ncwlife.com, or you can call us on our news tip line at 888-NCWL. That's 888-6295. Also, you can message us on Facebook or Twitter. Any number of ways you can contact us, let us know about breaking news and other topics or issues you'd like to see us report on. The news with Grant Olson comes your way Monday through Friday at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock right here on the NCW Life Channel. 20 minutes after the hour, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, what well, little sports we have, we'll get to, plus all the usual shenanigans. And don't forget, Jerry Anderson for the 1HE Central Lions Club will be joining me in the second half of this program to talk about a big event coming up on the 17th. All that and a whole bunch more. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live from Studio 2 in downtown Wenatchee. We'll be right back. attorney and owner of EstateEdge.com. If you found yourself incapacitated, do you have a durable power of attorney for financial and health care needs? A durable power of attorney allows you to nominate a person, an agent, to act for you and make decisions if you are unable to do so yourself. EstateEdge.com is your online resource to obtain these and other estate planning documents. For your protection and peace of mind, go to EstateEdge.com today. Having a relationship with your pediatrician is so important. Feeling that sense of trust, that is priceless. I tell everybody about CBCH. I love it there. When I make an appointment, I don't have to take an entire day off. As a working mom, my life is really busy. Family time is everything. That's what we all work towards. And I feel like CBCH respects that. Twenty-two minutes after the hour on this Tuesday, the 14th day of November, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I'm Dan Koontz, your host. Let's talk about sports. There's got to be something in the water in Leavenworth. Just this last weekend, the Cascade volleyball team placed second at the state 1A championship. Their only loss for the entire season was in the championship match against Kings. The Kodiak soccer team is in the state 1A semifinals this weekend. They have a semifinal game against LaSalle on Friday night at Shoreline Stadium. All of this comes after a fourth place finish for the soccer team last year, second place finish in 2015. Not to mention the volleyball team has gone to eight, has gone to eight straight state tournaments and have placed eight straight times. Two sixth place finishes, three third place finishes, a fifth place finish, a second place finish, the state championship four years ago. So we asked Coach Glenn Stefano, I hope I just, I think I just butchered in England. What the secret might be, is there something in the water in the Bavarian village? Uh, it's that fresh mountain air, I think. <laughs> yeah, what else can you say? No, I, um, it's just, it's an intense level, an intensity level, but more importantly, it's, it's the players that come out to the field. I mean, those are just healthy people. And they're willing to make the choice, and um, they're willing to make the choice that, that excellence is something that they're capable of, and that they're they're willing to do the work and and be driven and have the discipline to to strive for. So, uh, we just have a lot. Can you imagine if we had volleyball and and soccer in different seasons? I mean, it would be a lot of fun because there's a lot of phenomenal athletes. But, you know, athletic people and healthy people and um, easy to work with, easy to coach. Stefanko will lead his ladies to Western Washington. Their sights are sta are set on the state soccer title this weekend. But if they don't get the top prize, he says that's okay too. I think this is a mature enough group to realize that they've done their job. They're seniors. They've done an incredible job. They've been in the postseason every year. They're, they've come to Leavenworth, little Leavenworth, you know. And they're, they're. Uh, I've told them that if, if it were all to end today, there is nothing that they left behind other than a, a wonderful legacy. They did everything they could do and ten times more. And I, so I think they can comfortably now just have some fun and play the game. Best of luck to the Lady Kodiaks Cascade in the semifinals Friday night against LaSalle. Well, the Seahawks have been given a few days off to rest and recover after their hard-fought win over Arizona last Thursday down in the desert. Quarterback Russell Wilson is one of those recovery. He took a pretty good hit in the jaw, as you remember, on Thursday night. He admits he was hurt pretty badly at the time, but he quickly passed the concussion protocol. He got back into the game, but now four days later, he's still suffering from the effects of the hit. He's undergoing some therapy 
as we found out in a video that Russell Wilson posted on his Facebook page. This is very attractive, Dan. I'm about to go for a nice dip in the water, and now you're making fun of me. I'm like a shark in water. <laughs> Michael Phelps is a shark. I don't know about you. What am I then? A flotation device. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? That's what I am. Hmm. I'm like a fast platypus. <laughs> That's what I'm like. Fast one, no, a fast platypus. This is my real voice, but this jaw thing is not working for me. <laughs> it's very pretty. It's handsome. Very handsome. Handsome. Very handsome, handsome, handsome. Seattle, by the way, is off until next Monday. they got Monday Night Football. They'll be hosting the Atlanta Falcons at Century Lake Field. That is sports at 26 minutes after the hour. How about the obscure holiday today? Today is World Diabetes Day. There are two days. There's a National Diabetes Day, Diabetes Awareness Day, and just World Diabetes Day, which is always celebrated on November 14th. Of course, there's two types of diabetes, uh, type 1, juvenile diabetes, and then type 2, onset diabetes, adult onset diabetes. Uh, it is a major problem in this country among children and adults. It's a crisis really because we eat garbage and we don't exercise and you combine those two things, a sedentary lifestyle and a bad diet and you are re definitely raising your, up, your chances of getting onset diabetes. Type 2 diabetes usually can be avoided with just simply diet and exercise. So today is the day to maybe think about it. If you think, you know, I think I might not want to have adult onset diabetes and who wants it? This is a good chance to start addressing your diet and your exercise habits. It is World Diabetes Day. And of course, the number one thing everybody would want to have is a cure. That's the thing we think about the most. World Diabetes Day, always celebrated on November 14th. It is November 14th, 2017. How about today in history? A couple of interesting items. The Apple. The Appalachian meeting took place on this date 60 years ago, back in 1957. People were going, the Appalachian was a, a small little hamlet in upstate New York, about 150 miles from New York City, and people started to notice there's a lot of really nice cars in town without a state license plates. What's that all about? And pretty much local law enforcement started going to the same thing, and then state law enforcement went, what's with all these nice cars in our little bitty town? Turns out it was a big meeting of the mob, about a hundred of them, all gathered in this tiny little town in upstate New York to talk about loan sharking and trafficking of narcotics and gambling and all that good stuff. Huge summit meeting of about a hundred members of La Costa Nostra. Uh, they didn't do a very good job of hiding the fact that they were there because they eventually figured it out and they raided it. And about 60 of the, of the folks got arrested. About 40 of them fled into the woods. But one of the big, huge summit meetings in mob history was broken up on this date 60 years ago because they were dumb enough to drive around in a tiny little town with a bunch of really nice cars. Somebody is going to notice it happened in this state 60 years ago. 47 years ago today, November 14th, 1970, you see the headline there. Uh, they had just lost to East Carolina in Greenville, North Carolina. The Marshall University football team did. They lost 17 to 14. They chartered an Airways, uh, Southern Airways Flight uh, 932, and it crashed as they were approaching uh, the airport in Huntington, West Virginia. All 75 people on the plane died. The 37 members of the Marshall Thundering Herd football team, all the coaches, the flight crew, 25 season ticket holders, all of them perished. It is the deadliest tragedy affecting any sports team in the United States history. If you've ever seen the film We Are Marshall, it comes from this tragedy. They were thinking of actually shutting down the football program. They did not. The Marshall University Thundering Herd football team wiped off on this date 47 years ago today. And on a much happier note, let's do some birthdays, shall we, on this November 14th. The man who created Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch. It made him a very wealthy man. There he is. Sherwood Schwartz, the screenwriter and producer, was born in the state of 1916, passed away about six years ago at the age of 94. Not only did he create Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch, but he wrote the theme song to Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch. He did good for himself. Sherwood Schwartz, was born in the state in 1916. He'll always be known as Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake in MASH. I'm talking about McLean Stevenson, born in the state in 1927, passed away of a heart attack 
uh, back in 1996 at the age of 68. Uh, he said the greatest mistake he ever made was leaving the sitcom MASH after three years to pursue uh, other, other shows to do. He ended up doing four shows. The McLean Stevenson Show, In the Beginning, Hello Larry and Condo. None of them lasted a full season. Uh, McLean Stevenson, ironically enough, he died one day before the death of Roger Bowen. Roger Bowen played Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake in the movie MASH. McLean Stevenson, born in this state in 1927. Charles, the Prince of Wales, is 69 years old today. There he is, the longest serving heir apparent in British history because his mom, the Queen, is still on the throne. He's been waiting for 69 years. Since 1952, he's been waiting and waiting and waiting. Charles, the Prince of Wales, is 69 years old today. And a local birthday, my good friend Mike Simons sent this in. There he is, Mike, uh, wanting to wish Mary a happy birthday. She's 54 years old today. This is, your, this is from uh, Mike, Mary. Happy birthday to my lovely wife. Your family loves you lots and are wishing you a great and wonderful day on your birthday. Mary is a career educator, so I have tremendous respect for those people, Mary Simons, 54 years old today, comes from your husband, Mike, uh, your family, and all your friends who love you so much. Mary, happy birthday. That's how it works here. You submit birthdays to me. All you have to do is go to our website at ncwlife.com. On the website, you'll see uh, the icon for Wake Up in Anchee Valley. It, pictures, it features a little photo of me doing this. Um, click that on, up pops the birthday submission form, you fill it out, you attach the photo, we get your birthday on the air. If that doesn't work for you, or you go, I don't know about this, you can message us on Facebook, that's fine too. Whatever it takes to get your local celebrity's birthday on the air, we will take it and put them on the birthday club on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. 32 minutes after the hour, everyone is entitled to Mike McDonough's opinion in just a couple of minutes, and then Jerry Anderson for the Wenatchee Central Lions Club will be dropping by. This Friday, November 17th, they're having a tailgate party at the Wenatchee Convention Center. Get ready Huskies, get ready Cougs, Screaming Eagles, Central Washington Wildcats, anybody in between. They're all going to get together and have some fun on Friday during the noon hour. Jerry will talk about that in the second half of the program. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills. A chill is in the air and it's a perfect time for some old fashioned comfort food like our amazing Eggs Benedict, chicken fried steak, French dips, soups made from scratch, or fruit pies fresh from the oven. The crowds might be gone, but we're still here for you folks. So bring an appetite and a friend to Blueberry Hills in Manson, where you pick, you sit, you eat, and you visit. Open Wednesday through Sunday from eight to three, wildaboutberries.com. Is this really what we're gonna do on our girls' night out? We should go to Club Crow. The bar and grill in Cashmere? Yeah, let's go. Looking for a fun-filled, friendly hometown atmosphere? Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is the place to be. Hi, this is Justin. Here at Club Crow, we have full bar and restaurant, live music, a dance floor, pool tables, pull tabs, and live jam sessions the first Sunday of every month. Club Crow in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. Hi, I'm Blair from Works, your workout prescription. Have you ever started an exercise program and struggled to keep it going? So what if I told you that with this MyZone device, I could increase your chances of self-motivated exercise adherence by over 200%. Combine that with an exercise prescription specifically for your level of readiness, we'll increase it even more. And that's our new member success system. It's $99, it's exclusively at Works, it includes your MyZone belt. 
works. YourWorkoutRx.com. Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house featuring great family dining in downtown Chelan. We've got burgers, pub fare, and the best barbecue around. Try one of our award-winning sauces made fresh here in-house. So grab the whole gang and come on down. Stormy Mountain Brewing. Beer, barbecue, friends, and beer. Mike Mad Dog Minotti and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I was recently chastised for making a joke about President Trump, and it got me thinking about political comedy. You remember John Stewart, you know, the guy who used to host The Daily Show, a satirical news program on Comedy Central. He's a funny guy. You know, I disagreed with his spin on lots of things, but nevertheless, the guy's funny. I must say, though, that uh, I regarded him more as a comedian and don't think he rose to the position of being a political pundit, uh, the way some of my liberal friends seem to think he did. But whatever the question is, is it disrespectful to poke fun at a public or political figure? Like, let's say the president of the US. If so, is it always disrespectful? Or is it only disrespectful when the man being made fun of happens to be the current POTUS, somebody that you're in favor of? This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati. And that's my opinion. Join us for Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. This former police sergeant is plugged into not only the world of the streets, he's an actor and connoisseur of the arts. So join Mike and his guests for, well, Street Talk and Other Stuff. Mondays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30. It's Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. Time to replace your home comfort system? This Lennox dealer can help. If it's time to replace your old furnace or air conditioner, Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling gives free estimates. Call Patriot today. Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling will give your home a hug. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. I'm NCW Life News Director Steve Hess. Catch us on Local Tell Channel 12. You can watch us on Charter Channel 19 or stream us live on ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Where we cover the local high schools, the Wenatchee Wild, and the pro teams out of Seattle. On Saturday, we have a 90% chance of rain. Catch it all right here on the NCW Life Channel. Dear Mary Maids, please clean the kitchen and the cabinets and floors and the chairs. And I wish you could clean the dog. <sighs> Colin is now feeding himself. Thanks, Megan. Hi, Megan. No worries. We got it all cleaned up. Let's hope Colin gets past the spaghetti flinging stage soon. Till then, we've got you covered. See you next time, Mary Maids. And we are back 38 minutes after the hour. Wake up in Anchi Valley, Tuesday, November 14th. I am Dan Coos. Coming up this Friday, November 17th, the place to be is at the Wenatchee Convention Center because Wenatchee Rotary has gotten together with the Wenatchee Central Lions Club to bring back a really cool athletic tradition here in the Wenatchee Valley. And to talk about it, your friend and mine from Wenatchee Central Lions Club, Jerry Anderson, back again. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. We have a lot to talk about. Let's go back in time a little bit. The last time I saw you was in August. Yep. With your traditional, please consider being an official. <laughs> yeah. Um, did we do okay? Did you get new blood this we year? We did get some more new blood this year. We had a really good season. Um, we picked up uh, I don't know, four or five new folks this year. We picked up our first lady official this good. year. And she turned out to be terrific, so uh, we hope she comes back. And uh, uh, we're sensing a new attitude in Central Washington, uh, especially on a varsity level. We're seeing coaches that are actually happy to see us show up for their <laughs> games and, and thank us for being officials. I, I, I think that the WIA maybe has done their part in 
people are realizing we can't have high school sports if we don't have sports officials in all the sports. So and not just sports officials, qualified sports officials. Right. You got to have people that are dedicated. We certainly don't make enough money to, mm -hmm. the, for the time that we spend. Uh, we do get a little compensation, but it, you got to love the game. You got to love the kids, and that's why I would say 95% of us are out there. But uh, the crisis is still there. I don't yeah. want to use crisis. That sounds way too serious, but it's still a problem. You're still short-staffed. Well, in some, uh, we're short, and it's difficult. But we got through the season because we can trade back and forth. We get Okanagan County folks come down and maybe do a Chelan game or a Manson game or uh, any of game for us. And uh, believe it or not, we bring guys over from Snohomish County, and they work um, uh, maybe Cascade or Cashmere. And this year, they were excited to come over because one of their guys has a condo up in Chelan. So <laughs> they worked a Chelan game and a Manson game, and they just spent the night up there. So we can trade back and forth. But I know that volleyball, I know wrestling is a major problem with wrestling this year. They don't just don't have enough bodies. So, yeah, continues. So think about it. Think <laughs> about it. As Jerry likes to say, without officials, it's, it's just, just recess. recess. It's just recess, which is 100% true. Do you have a good year this year uh, officiating? Yeah. I saw you at most of the games. Yeah. we. Uh, I took a beating again this year. <laughs> For those of you but, who don't know, Jerry is primarily, although Jerry has, has done all the different positions that an official does, uh, primarily you are the umpire yes. for most games. And that means he's basically situated between the linebackers and the secondary. And you, more than anybody, gets has the best chance of getting knocked down as an official. It seems to run in cycles, and I did, all, well, I got knocked down once this year, but it, I, I took a beating on my elbow this year. And oh, it, no. <laughs> the short guys lower their helmets and they run right into your elbow, you know, and that kind of <laughs> hurts. But uh, all in all, we had a terrific season. Uh, not any major injuries that I know of anyhow for, for the kids, and uh, we had the, I'm still amazed at that Wenatchee Eastbound game. That was, uh, without a doubt, one of the most exciting football games I've ever officiated. And that was, that was really a good time this year. It was an electric atmosphere. The crowd was into it. It was an incredible game. Eastbound yeah. went out to an, an early lead. Wenatchee used some big plays to tie it up back and forth, back and Did. forth. Over time, yeah. they went. Was there times during games like that, a rivalry game, big crowd, electric atmosphere, that you have to remember that, that I mean, I have a job to do? I don't know about the other Not for me. Right. I, I am a fan. You're a football fan. But I think you're tra when you get in a game like that, it really becomes tense, and you really become focused on what you're doing, what your job is there. So, uh, yeah, even more so than, I mean, you get a game that's a blowout, and your mind wanders, and you go, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> But that when they, you have a game like that, no, you're real. I'm really focused, at least. It, mm -hmm. it, Everybody uh, raises their game just a little bit, don't they? Uh, well, yeah, because you, uh, you know, we're human beings, and we we rise to the level of the competition we're working. Sure. And for those of you who don't know, if you didn't see the Bridges Sportsmanship game, which is an incredible football game between the Wildcats and the Panthers, it's available on demand on our website. Yeah. Yeah. So go to our website at ncwlife.com and you'll see the icon there and click on it. You can watch the whole game. In fact, Eric made us a copy of that. We're going to be oh. running that video uh, before during, lunch on during, Friday. During so, lunch yeah. Time, so. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit, including uh, the keynote speaker is going to be uh, head coach of the Wenatchee Panthers, Scott Devereux, is going to talk about uh, three incredible athletes as he's had a chance to coach who have made it to the next level of football, specifically Cody O'Connell, the continent, the All-American <laughs> offensive lineman for the Washington State Cougars, the great offensive lineman for the Washington Huskies, Trey Adams, who unfortunately uh, is injured and will miss the rest of this year, but he says he's going to be back for his senior year. Yep. And uh, the speedster, Isaiah Brand Sims. These are three incredible athletes. As an official, do you, do you have specific memories of all of any of those three guys? We'll start with Cody. He's the oldest of the group. You know, I don't recall Cody, uh, uh -huh. to be honest with you. And, and it may have been a year I didn't work a bunch of Wenatchee games for whatever reason. But uh, Trey, yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the, he was a giant uh, when he was a senior and, and a very large kid. And, and nobody wanted to line up across from him. <laughs> and then, of course, Isaiah was just... I don't even know how to describe it because he was a very elusive runner and of course his speed was incredible and as we were talking about uh, before we went on air, my last memory of Isaiah was him reaching his hand out to pick me up after he'd knocked me down. So. <laughs> 
A very nice young man, I might add, too. <laughs> He's a great kid. All of these are just really good young adults now, represent the Wenatchee Valley very well. Just yes. be happy that Trey Adams didn't knock you down. Boy, he, isn't that the truth. Because <laughs> yeah, exactly. he was pancaking everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah. he just, the ball would snap, and he just knock whoever's on the other side right on his butt, and he go, yeah. who's next for me to block? Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. terrific. And he's even bigger now. And uh, I don't know if you saw a picture recently. I happened to see it on Facebook, but our friend Darcy Waterman standing next to uh, yeah. the continent. Yeah, Cody O'Connell. What, what a great story that is, too, Cody Yeah, because he came on late in mm -hmm. his career. I, he wasn't the big superstar, really, uh, as a younger player, but uh, developed, lift the weights, did all the right things, and now he's just nasty. In all your years as an official, who's the best football player you ever saw as you were on the field officiating that you would the game would be over and the guys would be gathered in the locker room the officials would go that guy's good is there oh, any um, one guy who stands uh, out I, I, I think of the Sealby twins when they played locally yeah the Sealby just, twins and Isaiah probably mm -hmm. just because of their speed and their abilities and then um, I always forget his name. The kid from Walla Walla that played for the quarterback for the Redskins. Yes, I know who you're talking about. Um, I did. I was fortunate enough to do a couple of his games when he was still in high school, and he was just a huge kid too, uh, and fast, huge, hands that were just huge, and he could hide that football really well. <laughs> As an official, do you guys have a general scouting report? of what the teams might do. Okay, now this, this team likes to run a lot of short passes, so it's going to be a longer game, or this team just runs, you know, uh, between the tackles. Do you, do you have any idea about what kind of offense or defense the teams do before you actually take to the field? We do to a certain degree because we're, you know, we do the same schools year after year. Mm -hmm. And so we know that uh, Wenatchee is, depending on their quarterback, going to do this, that. Uh, we know what Cashmere's offense, I'll see that'll be fun next year because they're going to have a whole new head coach out of Cashmere. Coach Z's retired, and uh, so that'll be a new ball game. We're pretty used to their offense. Um, Cascade's the same, and then the schools that come down from the north to play them. We have a rough idea what they're going to run. Uh, other than that, it's, have you seen this team yet this year? Yeah, right. uh, we may or may not have seen them at another school. The high school football playoffs are deep in. About the only local team that's still playing uh, gridiron is Okanagan. and they've moved into the right. uh, farther down the line in the 1A playoffs. When they get to this point in the playoffs, uh, the, the local officials association, in this case yours, the Chelan Douglas Officials Association, you will not be officiating any games involving teams in your geographic area. They bring them in from out of, out of area, right? Well, so, up through the, uh, not entirely true, up through the quarterfinals. Okay. Uh, last weekend, for example, um, uh, Manson played the sales out of the Wall Wall area, and that was uh, our, I was up on that game as the alternate, and we had our full crew on that game. Now this weekend is quarterfinals, and like you mentioned, I believe Okanagan's still involved. And when they get together uh, to play, half the crew will be from the Okanagan Association, and half the crew will be from wherever the visitors are coming okay. from uh, to play. After that, then the next step is the state semifinals. That is assigned by the state as well as the Tacoma Dome, the state final. From an officiating standpoint, when you have a mixed crew, for lack of a better term, is that hard? Because you've done playoff games, and it'd be three it's, guys from your association, three guys from the It's actually Spokane. gotten uh, so much easier in the last, I'd say, 15 or 20 years because the state has codified the, uh, the mechanics that we use on the field so that when we get state semifinals, for example, or the finals, we have five guys from five different associations that come together. But we all know that that referee is going to do this on a certain play, or the umpire is going to do that. We all know what everybody else's job is, and they do their job. That's why they're working that championship game. And it actually is quite easy to come together and work as a crew. Is there a grading system? How does that work? You're good enough. You get to, you get to do playoffs now. You get more money. How does that well, work? Well, the money is not great. <laughs> <laughs> but how does that um, work? How do officials work their way into doing playoff games? As opposed well, to it's, it's kind of a combination of things. First of all, you've got to be recommended by your local association, so you've got to be up the ladder in terms of experience and, and ability. Uh, the other is the state has uh, what they call uh, observers or evaluators, and we submit a list of names of people that we want evaluated for that particular season. This year we had six guys that got evaluated. 
The evaluator comes in, he listens to the pregame that's going on, and goes up and sits in the stands and make notes of the ball game and what's going on and how these guys are reacting to situations and how they call the game. And then he sits down and does an evaluation, makes comments on things that happen, and then rates them anywhere from qualified to do junior high school through state, state uh, or postseason playoffs. And you, so that's the other half of the thing. All six of our guys this year were evaluated as capable of doing postseason, which is very nice. That's the most we've ever had uh, evaluated at the top of the Nice point of pride level. for your, yeah. your deal as well. We're very excited about that. We still need to talk about this tailgate lunch. And before we do that, I have one quick story, and you're going to love this story. I don't know if I've told you this or not. This was about 10 years ago. I, was, I, I succeeded Paul Pugh as the public address announcer uh, at the Apple Bowl for Panther football games. And I did it for 12, 13 years until just a couple of years ago. And the Wenatchee Panthers were playing the Mead Panthers in a playoff game on a Saturday afternoon. And my sister BJ was the athletic director at Wenatchee High School at the time. And uh, my cell phone rings in the middle of the game, halfway through the first quarter. And it's BJ, and she goes, the Mead school bus that brought the team down hit a Mercedes Benz in the parking lot. <laughs> and can you get on the, the PA system at the next opportunity and say, we're, you know, explain what happened, and could the person who owns the Mercedes Benz please track me down and we'll get this taken care of. So I found the next appropriate time to do that. And uh, I just got through closing the microphone and the official calls, to, head, the referee calls timeout, walks over to BJ. It was his Mercedes Benz. I was working that game. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> the poor guy, I think it was from the Tri-Cities, wasn't yes. it, if I remember correctly. Yep. Yes, the Mead school bus hit the referee's Mercedes Benz in the parking lot. I don't lot. think they got to yeah. call the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Mead beat Wenatchee that afternoon, yes. as a matter of fact. It's 51 minutes after the hour. Jerry Anderson with Wenatchee Central Lions Club. Uh, is joining me. We need to get down to real business and talk about Friday afternoon's tailgate luncheon. We'll do that. When we come back, we're having too much fun. It's Wake <laughs> Up Financial Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is State Representative Kerry Condotta inviting you to check out our newest show on the NCW Life Channel. We call it the 12th District. Each week, we'll be taking an in-depth look at various political issues that affect our area, our state, and the world. We'll be featuring local and statewide experts on the subject matter at hand. Please join us weekly for the 12th District with yours truly, Kerry Condotta. Check your channel guide for times or go to ncwlife.com for details. Contractors, furniture makers, and weekend do-it-yourselfers around North Central Washington will tell you that Lombard's Hardwood Supply is the place to get what you need. Lombard's Full Mill Workshop can handle jobs large or small. Lombard's has a full line of interior and exterior doors available, as well as custom barn doors. From alderwood to zebra wood and everything in between, it's Lombard's Hardwood Supply on School Street, in Sunny Slope. Like us on Facebook and check out our monthly special. NCW Life Channel, your home for local news, local weather, local sports, and local shows featuring local people covering local topics like Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, Let's Learn, Street Talk and Other Stuff, The 12th District, Life with Lisa, and Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. The 2017 Ski Do Summit Sleds. Next generation Rev Platform. The most powerful two stroke engine in the industry. For the unmatched handling and power to own the next side hill, the next drop, the next ride. Ski Do, what matters is what's next. Back at it here on this Tuesday edition of Wake Up in Anche Valley. Dan Koontz alongside Jerry Anderson for the Wenatchee Central Lions Club. Whose idea was this to bring this back, this big tailgate luncheon where the Huskies and the Cougars and, every, and the Wildcats and the Panthers all get together for a wing day? Well, I'm not, I'm not real sure because they started a couple years ago, but I believe it was Ford Barrett and, and Jen Lal from our club uh, kind of brought this back. And it's a, a fun event. We've had some good times over the years. You know, we've had some... We had the dog father speak one year uh, and uh, some others that are 
Jim Walden, I remember yes. uh, one year spoke, the former Cougar coach. Yeah, and uh, the guy that was uh, the former AD at WSU that just moved to uh, Iowa. Moose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've had some good speakers in the past. It's a great they? tradition. And for those of you who don't remember, they used to run the football across the state, either from Pullman to Seattle or Seattle to Pullman by a, a fraternity uh, got together. Right. They had, uh, were brother fraternities and Greek rows at, at, at their individual institutions. They don't do that anymore. And the reason that they don't do it, it's certainly not from lack of trying. But the game has been moved. The Apple Cup has been moved. And it was always centered around the Apple Cup, this, this luncheon we're talking about. Right. It's been moved now to Thanksgiving week. It was always the week before Correct. Thanksgiving for years and years. But because of the, the longer schedule and everybody gets a bye week, uh, the Apple Cup now falls on Thanksgiving week, which does not work very good for Pullman because Pullman, there's no school that week and they just shut yeah. down. So they have the, the, the great tradition of running the football across the state no longer exists, but they used to do the handoff right here in Wenatchee. Right in Wenatchee and then right. they built the, the, the thing around it. Yeah. So it's back. Talk about the show. What can people expect on, on, uh, on Well, Friday? we're going to have all kinds of stuff. We're uh, going to have a raffle. We got, uh, and I haven't heard these young people, but they had them last year and they're, they were, everybody loved them so much. We're bringing back, uh, you were talking about Wenatchee music. We're bringing back their drum line again this year, which I guess is fantastic. So we're looking forward to them for a little entertainment. Uh, we're asking everybody to dress in team colors, and, and uh, we've had uh, some terrific response. I know Central Washington's going to have a table. I heard from a few, uh, a few of my friends from Eastern where I went to school are going to be there. Of course, the Cougs and the Huskies, uh, some Stanford folks, uh, a number of other universities. We want to make this kind of inclusive and include all the schools that we can uh, in this event. In fact, I have the flyer. You got the, the Eastern Washington, Central Washington, which by the way is undefeated. They're having a great yeah, year. Yeah, they're having you a great Cougars, year. You got Cougars, Ducks, Stanford, which obviously because uh, Isaiah Brand Sims will be a topic. The Huskies, and how did Notre Dame get in here? Uh, we got some alumni in okay. the area. So. I'm off of that. I'm just, I'm just kind of curious. It kind of jumped out at me. Uh, so um, it's going to be a great, great wing ding. I'm right. glad it's back. And, and then, a coach, uh, of course, Coach Devereaux is going to speak. And um, in my third, now 37 years of fishing, I can never remember the, the three kids from one school uh, playing D1 sports. And so I, I think it's terrific. And, and you know, uh, Coach Devereaux is going to speak. They're going to have about a, a lot of pictures of the kids and their various activities that they've done. And, should be very interesting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that portion. Isaiah Brand Sims was an incredible athlete uh, at Wenatchee High School in a number of sports, but uh, he's basically concentrating on track at Stanford. He won four consecutive 100-meter state championships when right. he was at Wenatchee High School. The guy can fly. Uh, and then the other two are just incredible football players, Trey Adams uh, and uh, Cody O'Connell. Um, Cody is an All-American, will probably be named All-American again this year. Probably a good chance to win the Outland Trophy this year also. Yeah. So that's, that's incredible. Uh, and they all played pretty much at the same time. I think Cody is yeah, the oldest. Cody's a is. redshirt senior, right? Yes. So he, he was a senior when Trey would be a sophomore then, I guess. They, maybe, right. they played one year together. And so, so that'll be exciting. We're going to have some raffles. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, have a good lunch. You know, the usual hot dogs and pulled pork sandwiches, you know. And, I love that. Uh, no, what's a tailgate party without an adult beverage? There'll right. be a no-host bar available. And tickets are only $15, so it's not like it's going to break the bank to attend. 15 bucks in advance, $20 at the door, and tickets are uh, available now at the Apple Blossom office and at the Chamber office. So they're quite readily, or any, almost any... Uh, Rotarian or, or Lions Club member. And they, they want you to get your tickets in advance because they had to figure out how many pulled pork sandwiches and hot dogs. That's right. Food. I got to get, you know, I'm cooking back there too. And so. <laughs> I'm glad it's the tradition has come back. It's a good thing. Yeah. So kudos to the Wanchi Central Lions Club and the, and the local rotaries for. Well, it's, it's fun. Uh, we get together every year for the All Service Club luncheon, but that's kind of formal and stuffy and, you know, you got things you got to get done. This is a really a relaxed atmosphere and we can get together and pat each other on the back, I think, a little bit for some of the good works we do in our communities and uh, have a good time. Uh, we got about a minute left. What's up next for the Wenatchee Central Lions Club? What do you guys have in the hopper that we should be keeping an eye on? Any big projects in the? Uh, boy, or nothing that you, comes to mind. I just uh, okay. We just finished down at Pibus Market. Uh, we're very, very proud that we put a new sound system in down there, invested a lot of money. But now when you get down to listen to, uh, if your kid is choir is singing, you're actually going to be able to hear them. <laughs> and um, 
If they have to make announcements, they can, can do, do it, it and yeah. everybody can hear it, and we're very proud of that. Well, kudos to the Wenatchee Rotary Club and the Wenatchee Central Lions Club. We'll see you uh, Friday during the noon hour down at the convention center. Yes, indeed. We'll look right. forward to that. Jerry, it's always good to see you, my friend. Thanks, Come man. by and see me anytime. All we'll right. do it. All right. Uh, tomorrow, my guest will be Darcy Christofferson, the administrator of the Washington State Apple Blossom Festival. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.